February 1943, Commander Arlie Burke took command of Destroyer Division 43, USS Waller and Conway, in the South Pacific. The war had come suddenly, catching America off guard, and the Navy was fighting to maintain the offensive against strong Japanese opposition in the Pacific. Burke studied naval warfare in the South Pacific, poring over secret battle reports of American action in the region, particularly the many night engagements off Guadalcanal, focusing on areas where pre-war doctrine and wartime practice had failed, and how wartime innovations like radar could boost American combat performance. A personal experience crystallized his thinking. In his first combat aboard the Waller the night of March 6th and 7th, the small U.S. task force encountered two Japanese destroyers. Burke argued briefly but heatedly with the Waller's captain about how many torpedoes to fire at the enemy. The incident taught Burke that a commander had to know his subordinate captain's plans and they had to know his thinking prior to the engagement, not when the battle was imminent. On November 2, 1943, Burke's approach received its first test at the Battle of Empress Augusta Bay, where American troops were moving ashore. Burke Squadron 23, the Little Beavers, was offshore when radar detected an approaching Japanese cruiser division. In the action that followed, the Japanese force was badly mauled, with one light cruiser and one destroyer sunk and four other ships badly damaged. Burke came away from the battle more convinced than ever that the element of surprise and allowing destroyers to attack quickly were keys to victory. Burke's new way of fighting was tested a short time later when Squadron 23 was ordered to intercept a Japanese task force 35 miles west of Buka at Cape St. George. With the aid of intercepted Japanese messages, Admiral Halsey knew the task force had been ordered to evacuate Japanese soldiers from the island. Because one of his destroyers had boiler trouble, Burke reported his top speed would be held to 30 knots. But as he steamed north, he reported his position and speed at 31 knots. The next dispatch he received from Admiral Halsey's South Pacific Force Headquarters was addressed to 31 Knot Burke, a nickname that would stick with him for the rest of his career. 31 Knot Burke, get athwart the Buka Ribal evacuation line about 35 miles west of Buka. If no enemy contacts by 0300 Love, 25th, come south to refuel same place. If enemy contacted, you know what to do. Early on Thanksgiving Day, 1943, Burke's destroyers made radar contact with a Japanese destroyer task force shuttling troops to and from Buka. Crying, hold on to your hats, boys, here we go, Burke led his three-ship destroyer Division 45 into attack launching torpedoes across the dark waters, while Division 46's two destroyers under Commander Count Austin covered Burke's charge. Flames shot up against the sky as two enemy destroyers exploded and one sank. The remaining three Japanese destroyers headed north, with Burke's three ships giving chase, while Austin's ship stayed behind to finish off the remaining stricken enemy warship. Burke's little beavers ran down one of the surviving three Japanese destroyers and sank it with five-inch guns. The battle has since been described as an almost perfect execution of Burke's doctrine, one that may be considered a classic. Burke's delegation of authority to his commanders through his doctrine of faith gave American forces the element of surprise and helped defeat the enemy. When he departed Squadron 23 to accept the first in a series of promotions, Burke issued a parting message to the men to whom he had delegated so much authority and in whom he had invested much faith. Your heroic conduct and magnificent ability will make your families and your country proud of you, he told them. The same could be said of their commander, Harley Burke. For more information on this naval heritage topic, visit our website at www.history.navy.mil. This Naval Heritage Program was made possible by the Surface Navy Association, promoting recognition of the role of the Navy and surface forces in U.S. security.